camera movement. One of the most important things in filmmaking is how to move your camera. Creating tone and telling stories. It all comes from being able to move your camera in the most impactful way. Having the best and most specked out camera and all that other stuff is great, but that also means nothing if you can't use that gear to tell stories or to move your audience in any way. All right, how's everybody out there doing today? It's your boy Volandis. It's good to see y'all. All right, so in this video, we're going to be talking about camera movement, one of the most important things in filmmaking. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about my favorite camera movements and what they mean to me and why I use them. All right, so one, the static shot, which is not a camera movement at all. But me personally, I love static shots. A lot of the videos that I film here on YouTube, I film by myself and I'm usually filming me. So a lot of my shots, are static shots but i think static shots are great and they do a great job at setting mood and tone for certain things for example dialogue for example as you can see right now the camera is not moving because i'm talking directly to the camera and i'm addressing you guys directly if the camera was moving while i was doing this it would probably be a little uncomfortable to watch and would probably create a different feeling than the camera just sitting here on a tripod pointed at me Outside of dialogue, I also think static shots are great for creating a sense of loneliness. It creates a sense of being alone. Like I said, I film all these videos by myself and with the camera being on a tripod, it's a very clear indication that I am by myself most of the time. It also creates moments of stillness and has a way of keeping our attention although the camera is not moving. It's almost like we can't look away for certain things when the camera is still <laughs> on a tripod not moving at all it also gives a little painterly vibe to some scenes all right so the next camera movement is panning and tilting for me i don't necessarily use tilting too much but when i do use it it's because i'm trying to create motivated camera movement if a subject or character in one of my scenes is moving around sometimes i like to move my camera with that subject or character i do this so that character doesn't break frame and that the shots are focused on that person's movements especially if they're important or sharing information that's you know vital to the scene for me i personally love panning i think we all love panning i think everybody out there who has a phone has done a panning shot before whether that was to show a location that they were in to show off their food or to show the people that they're with I use panning when I'm trying to reveal information in the scene or when I'm trying to introduce a subject or object into a scene. It can be something as small and simple as a vinyl needle. And clearly how slow or fast you do these things will give off a different feeling to the viewers. To me, slow pants and tails creates anticipation. It also builds suspense. And it could even be used to magnify how vast a landscape is. While fast pants and tilts to me feel more energetic and kind of quirky. All right, so next is the tracking shot. This camera movement is usually used to track a subject moving through a space on all axis. It could also just be done from behind or in front of a subject as well. These are most commonly done on a dolly or a steady cam. We've all seen these shots from almost all filmmakers here on YouTube, but I will say that the tracking shot is 
extremely fun to do and it's also a cool way to engage your audience with the character in their environment. Like the shot of my homie skateboarding at the beginning of this video. The camera starts behind him, comes to the side, and then ends in the front of him. This was pretty easy to do with a steady cam. And I think I can speak for everybody when I say we're all suckers for a good tracking shot. And last but not least is the push in and the pull out. And you know, my pull out game is strong. So I don't have too much to say about push ins and pull outs. They are very creative ways to like tell a story and engage an audience. I usually do my push ins and my pull outs <laughs> in post because sometimes, like I said, I film by myself. But sometimes when I'm not filming by myself, I like to do nice, good push ins because I feel like it's getting closer to your subject because it is. But y'all know what I'm trying to say. And sometimes I'll do pull outs too if I'm trying to show how small my subject is within their environment or if I'm just trying to show more the environment but at a slower pace and naturally and slow and nice and make it just feel cinematic. Yeah, There are other camera movements that I didn't mention in this like dolly zooms and booming and arc shots and whip pans and stuff like that but these are the ones that I use most commonly especially for this YouTube channel and these YouTube videos so these are my favorite camera movements and in these camera movements better help me tell the stories that I'm trying to tell to you guys so yeah but anyway with that being said that's it for me I hope you guys enjoyed it got something out of it if you're new to the channel please do me a favor hit the subscribe button would be truly and gratefully appreciated if you are already subscribed to the channel you already did what you had to do so I am not talking to you but with that being said I'm gonna get up out of here I'm gonna do some shit man I hope you guys have a wonderful one let's get it no vibes man